thank you so much. That did set us up really well, just beautifully. Um, thank you all for coming. It's great to see you all. Some of you I know, some of you I am looking forward to getting to know better. My name is Jane Wenger, and I'm a freelance dramaturg. It's sort of like going to an AA meeting. <laughs> I'd like to welcome Howl Round here and welcome everyone out there. I know some of you, and uh, the rest of you, I'll end up getting to know you too through the rest of my freelance career. And, okay, can you hear me now? I'm always afraid of being a little too loud. Um, I live in San Francisco, and I work anywhere they'll have me. I have uh, quite a few jobs here and there that run concurrently, and we'll talk about those later. I'm going to do our introductions with my esteemed entrepreneurs. Hello. Ooh. I want to sing you a little song. I'm just kidding. Um, my name is Nakisa Edamod. I'm a dramaturg, producer, director, and translator based in San Francisco. I specialize in new plays and musicals and I delight in all kinds of collaborations. Um, I'm the former dramaturg and literary manager of San Diego Repertory Theater, San Jose Repertory Theater, and the Wilma Theater in Philadelphia. And now I am the, your executive VP of freelance and the regional VP of Metro Bay Area for LMDA. So thanks for coming to our panel. Hello, um, um, my name is Amy Handelsman. I'm a freelance dramaturg. I um, know Beth actually from when I worked at the Mark Taper Forum, which is now called Center Theater Group with the other two theaters. I freelance now. I was in Los Angeles for 21 years. I started in theater in New York. I went to work in film and television in Los Angeles. I uh, created a department at the Taper, CTG, under the auspices of Showtime to work with playwrights who wanted to get into um, cable television and film. And um, let's see, what else do I do? Um, I'm on the Artistic Council of the Emile. I've consulted for a lot of theater development places. I have carved a little bit of a, of a specialty in playwrights moving into other areas or adapting from other media. Hi, I'm Sean Renee Graham. Um, I'm originally from San Jose, California and made my way east to pursue studies in dramaturgy. Um, I started my career as the literary associate at, at Hartford Stage Company, where I ran uh, some play development programs, um, mostly the Voices Reading Series, which was a free series on Monday night, and sort of got my feet wet with producing, sort of, by, by doing that. Um, then I came to New York solely as a freelancer. Um, and started my own consulting firm, uh, All Creative Rights, which is providing artistic services to individual artists, helping them raise money, helping them market themselves, that kind of thing, and also script development work with, with new writers. I work at uh, the field as the artist services manager in which I spend my days helping all artists from all disciplines lead create, develop sustainable lives for themselves. Uh, I'm the literary director at the Classical Theater of Harlem, and I'm the resident dramaturg at something called the American Slavery Project, which is uh, commissioning African-American writers to respond to slavery in America. Hi, I'm uh, Don Kugler. I'm in Canada. I came very late to dramaturgy and had no formal training in it. I was uh, working on my MA in English Literature and I finished the coursework for the PhD in English Literature in Saskatoon. I got a Canada Council grant to finish my thesis. I bought a van and went to uh, the east coast of Canada because all my friends were going to Vancouver. I. Uh, didn't really work on my thesis, ended up working at a fish plant, uh, went to live with uh, another couple on an island and worked with them for nine years, building a house, and eventually through this whole process, working on a newspaper and fishing, uh, got interested in community theater, and went from community theater to do my MFA in directing at York, 
and coming out of that, started to freelance as both a production uh, a gopher, uh, eventually a production manager and a dramaturg within the theater and then have continued that cycle. Currently, I've uh, landed in Vancouver where I am an uh, uh, instructor in the School for Contemporary Arts at Simon Fraser University. And I freelance as a dramaturg primarily in the development of dance and new plays, uh, but also do production dramaturgy as well. Thank you. I didn't mention that my work is um, specializing in new work only. I've specialized in new work, working with directly with the playwrights or group of collaborators as it's being developed um, since the, pretty much the beginning of my career. I came up in my early years in um, New York. I was the artistic director of a group here called Women's Ensemble. And in San Francisco, I was the artistic director of an organization called the Bay Area Playwrights Foundation. Um, I have a wide range of work that is appealing to me. I work a lot with solo performers. I directed an opera and dramaturged an opera in January that I absolutely love doing. I also really like working with dance theater a lot and spoken word theater. So those are some of the, the longer I'm in the business, the more exciting things seem to fall my way. Um, but I don't think it's by luck. I think it's by making our own luck and creating our own situations by what is appealing to us, what we want to get better at, who we want to spend our time with. And so it's really about also just being able to stay, find a way, we're going to talk today about finding a way to make this business something that can also pay our rent, be able to let us pay off our college loans, and how we can stay in the business that's rewarding as an art to us, but also how, how do we make that happen? So we'll, we'll see what kind of answers we have for you and what kind of answers you might be able to add on to this. So I'm interested in how my fellow panel members got into this field. And you sort of answered that a little bit um, about saying that that wasn't what your intention was from the beginning. So I'm going to pass my mic to Nikisa and say, how did you how did you get into this business? Was it your original intention? And how did you know that you wanted to be a dramaturg? And did you know what that meant? <laughs> yeah. Does this work too? Um, so I had spent a year of study abroad, my junior year in college at UC San Diego in Paris, studying really crazy subjects in uh, French. Um, like semiology, semiology, psychoanalysis, um, film theory, uh, some theater classes, and at the University of Paris 3 at the Sor New Nouvelle Sorbonne. But anyway, I came back to school and I thought, oh, people in Paris live lives of art, and it's okay. <laughs> so I came back and auditioned for an acting class that was too full, and the a uh, teacher did five minute interviews with us and he asked me what I had been doing and I told him about the classes. He said, do you know what a dramaturg is? I said, no. He said, you'd be a very good one, come work for me. And he was the associate artistic director at San Diego Repertory Theater, Todd Salovey, who's still there. <laughs> and so he became my mentor. I was his literary intern. And then I became his dramaturg for the first show he ever directed there. This was back in uh, 92, I think. And so I started my career as a freelance dramaturg while finishing my undergrad degree, then applied to the MFA program and did an MFA in dramaturgy at UC San Diego. And when I graduated, they eventually created a position for me and I was the resident dramaturg and artistic associate. So being at different regional theaters enabled me when I moved to London for a short time that I could start a freelance career. I had made enough connections. And so that's how I'm doing the work now. So that's how I started. <laughs> how did 
I start? Um, I went to a school that I thought had a drama department and didn't, which was Harvard. And uh, maybe they do now, I don't know. Um, so everything that I did was outside of academia. And um, I wanted to work in the entertainment business. That was as specific as I knew. I didn't go to graduate school. Um, somebody gave me good advice and said a good way to learn about what aspect is to work at a large scale talent and literary agency. My first job was on a desk at ICM, and um, I learned a lot there. I freelanced as a story analyst, so I was working for Paramount and Warner Brothers and, and UA and some smaller companies, reading books and going to theater and, and doing coverage, meaning writing about their dramatic possibilities for film or television. I had a terrible breakup with a guy and went to Los Angeles um, and uh, to see if I could work there because all of the story development jobs were there. I paid a lot of dues in Los Angeles. I worked there for 20 years, not realizing that as a story executive or a creative executive or producer, I basically was a dramaturg for those, for film and television. And then I got the perfect job working at a theater but involved with film and television, the taper job. Um, which doesn't, I, it had never existed before. I'm trying to create it to see if it can exist again. I liked what Jamie said about um, the entrepreneurial spirit. I mean, ambition. I grew up, you know, women were still not supposed to be ambitious. You know, I'm that old. But um, the thing is, when w working in Hollywood, I mean, what, what I basically did was work with writers developing material, which is what n new play dramaturgs do. But I also really, really had to learn how to be entrepreneurial within the studio system because, you know, all those jobs, maybe every job in, involves selling, so you have to be able to, to pitch, you have to be able sometimes to figure out how to raise funds, you know, how to market it to an audience, all that sort of thing. So I ended up being, not a reluctant dramaturg, but I ended up sort of backing my way into it from other forms. I didn't think I could make a living in theater. Um, I do now, I do now, but I also think it's, easier when you have sort of hybrid skills. And, and it's appealing to me not just to have my own business, but to actually call it a business, as opposed to, you know, just being put myself up for hire somewhere as an independent contractor, to say this is a business. I think we'll get into it later about, you know, treating yourself as a business. Um, but I think you have to be scrappy still, you know. Um, and I agree, I've, I've given, you know, I think a lot of freelancers have a hard time you know, making a contract for doing a certain amount of work, you love the writer, you love the project, you end up putting in a lot more time and, you know, you end up having financial problems. Thank you very much. Before Sean Renee gets started, could someone go around and pick up those questions off the table for us, please? And um, thank you, Amy, and I really like the idea of continuing to talk about it as a business that really segued with what Jamie said, and we will get back and talk about that some more. Uh, I started out uh, wanting to be an actor, director type <laughs> and as an undergrad. I was at uh, Cal California State University, Los Angeles, and uh, at the end of my um, time there, uh, I ended up taking a criticism class with someone by the name of Susan Mason, <laughs> who um, uh, was very involved with dramaturgy and doing projects um, in that capacity. And uh, I, I started doing the writing assignments and she said, you should be a dramaturg because the way you're talking about this work that you're seeing is so thorough and you know thoughtful um, that um, uh, that's a, the direction I think you should go in. And then she, at the time she was also the uh, editor of Theater Journal and she said, um, I want you to start seeing stuff around town um, and start writing about it, because eventually I want to publish something of yours. And I had just never really thought about it, <laughs> um, honestly. And um, so I ended up writing an article about the Actors Gang <laughs> uh, and their production of Wojciech, and she published that this uh, summer that I, I graduated from Cal State LA. Um, and so then I took an internship at the Mark Taper Forum, the world is so small, uh, with Oliver Mayer and um, Frank, his last name, Dwyer, yeah. Um, and I spent about a year there just reading scripts, um, working on some of the play festivals there, um, and 
Oscar Eustace was there at the time. A lot of different people were going through there. Tony Kushner was writing Angels in America. It was just an amazing time to be um, uh, at that theater. Um, but I also knew that I wanted to, since I was get, gaining so much experience with new play development, that I wanted to um, get more classical training, which I didn't really have.